Hello everybody and welcome to a new video from Durham Grace School of Pest Control. Uh, this next video is going to be all about building a feeder for grey squirrels uh, and the reason behind that is because on a lot of the Facebook groups um, there's usually not a week goes by where somebody doesn't ask the question on building feeders whether it be size or design uh, there's always comments and questions on those so I thought I'm going to do my own little video and show everybody exactly what I do for my perms. Now as you can see this one's already built but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through all the little steps we've got to put these together. It's not hard if I can do it anybody can. Um, this was just a design that I came up with a while ago. These ones I've made um, extra large so they hold about between 18 and 20 litres of food which is going to be ideal for when you've got a permission which is a long way away and um, some of mine are over an hour away so hence is the reason I make them big so I'm not going over there every few days to top a feeder up especially with the price of diesel at the minute and um, so there's plenty of feed in these constantly and uh, one of these will probably last two or three weeks um, on a on a decent um, population of grays so like I said I'm not going over there all the time just build them like this and then sort it for a few weeks. Another thing you need to think about when you're building one of these is will it actually fit onto the tree that you're going to be strapping it to? Will it leave a backstop either side of the feeder? Now this bit at the back which is screwed onto the back boards of the feeder that is where you're going to be able to strap your feeder to onto your tree so you can either use a normal ratchet strap or you can buy some um, black metal straps from Amazon. Now this is the ratchet strap I was on about. You can either use these or these ones. Like I said, you can get these from Amazon. I think you can get these from B&Q. You normally get them in either two and a half meter sizes or five meter sizes. And they just slot through the gaps through there and then tie onto the tree, ratchet strap onto the tree. I've, had, uh, I've been using these for a couple of years now. I've only ever had one chewed through. Luckily enough, I still had two on the, on the feeder, so it wasn't a problem. On top of that, you need to think about where you're going to fit your feed platform. And by that, I mean this area here. Are you going to shoot head on or are you going to shoot side on? Yeah, that will dictate where you're going to put your little platform for the squirrels to sit on once they've got it into the feeder. Now, obviously, you are going to need some bits and bobs for this. Um, but as far as the timber's concerned, um, instead of going out and buying fence boards, I normally just put a post on a local Facebook group asking if any fencing companies have got any offcuts when they've been building the fences. Um, and what you'll find out sometimes is, um, especially after we've had the, the recent storms, there is a few people who had new fences put up and they've been left with loads of bits like this. So I've had just uh, about 25 bits like this. Um, I've just picked them up the other day and I've got some more coming so that's an ideal source of free timber for making your feet. As well as that, what I use, I use a damp proof course for the lid. You can buy this for about six quid a roll I think and it'll make multitudes of feeds. You're never going to run out of this stuff. And like I say, it's cheap as chips and that keeps the roof nice and dry. Um, as well as that, just find out if anybody's got any um, cycle inner tubes lying about, any old ones. I use that for sealing between the back plate of the feeder and the lid. So that will keep everything inside nice and dry. There's a couple of other things you'll need. Um, what I normally do is I normally buy these off the internet. Basically all they are 
they're acrylic sheets and you can get them cut to size wherever you want and um, so I think these are 145 square and they just fit nicely on top of your feeder tray and just use self tapping screws to screw those on and then onto the feeder and these are the feeder trays now what I use these I get these from screw fix I think they're about 47 pence each I think they are and what they are is they are um, electrical knockout back boxes um, and the sides can fold down so we can fold one side side down flat which will then push in underneath the front and then you just screw down on the uh, your platform nice and easy to use and they're great to spot on right so first off what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my backboards which I know are going to be 31 inches so I'm going to do that now right so what I've done I cut my two backboards now I'm going to join them both together with three bits of offcuts which will form half of my strapping point later on right that's the backboard joined together next off I'm going to cut the sides now what I've done now I've measured this so I'm going to be cutting this so it's 27 at the back leading down to 23 and a half at the front and that's going to give us the slope for the roof Right, so what I've done now, I've drilled pilot holes all the way along the edge, on the back, on both sides, so I can attach the sides of the, these screws at the back. I always drill pilot holes because if you drill them right next to the wood on the end, the chances are it's going to split. If you drill pilot holes, it makes things a hell of a lot easier. Right, so that's the sides screwed onto the back. Um, if you're so inclined, if you want to really, you can actually glue these before you screw them as well, as long as you clamp them and nice and uh, nice and steady. Next, I'm going to cut a couple of bits for the floor, and that will incorporate what we need for platforms on the front. And now the floor is on. I'm also putting a slope in the back, which is going to force the feed forward and into the tray when I fit the tray. So that's what that piece there is for. It's just to make sure that it all runs down towards the front of the tray. Right, so what I've done now, I've flattened down one of the sides of this electrical box. So that will go on the floor inside the feeder and this bit will stay outside. Right, so what I've done now, I've fixed the ramp at the back inside. I've also screwed on the feeder tray. And I've cut a hole in this bottom piece which is going to go on the front like that. And that's going to screw on. And all you've got to do later on is fit the perspex lid on top of there. Right, now that's a hole in the front done. All I've done is uh, measured the whole width of the feeder and cut lengths of these to match and then just screw them on all the way down. So it's basically four bits across the feeder and then that's that sorted. The next bit to go on to is the roof. Now the next bit for this is the roof. But as you'll see, that from the slope to the back and you want some overhang at the front, it's going to be about nine inches. Now these fence boards are only six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two of these straight down in half, which will give us the nine inches. Now I'm just going to fix them together with these fixing plates, you can get these anywhere, screw fix, your local hardware shop, anywhere, the buttons. So we'll just uh, tie two of those together like that, and then that's sorted. We just need to fix the roof on, on it now. Right, so that's the roof on now. It's got a hinge at the back and it's got the three fixing plates on there to join the two bits together. It's got an overhang on both sides and one at the front. So that's going to keep the rear enough just nice. Right, so the flip lid's sorted now. All you are is two 13 half mil by three and a half mil self tappers to go through the perspex and then two 16 mil screws to go into the front of the feeder. 
and that's not going to stay up at all. Right, next step is to put some inner tube on the top between the roof and the battle boards. This is going to keep most of the water out. Right, so that's the inner tube stapled on now, as you can see. The next step is to put some strips of this across the top of the roof. Right, so that's the damper of membrane on top of the roof. And all I've done, made it a little bit longer and staple it all the way underneath. So anything, any rain that runs on there, it's just going to run off the sides and off the front. So it's going to keep it nice and dry. So the last thing to do now is put the mesh on. Right, I'm just starting to put the mesh around this. I'm going to cover it off, apart from the very back bit. Dead simple to do. One thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to measure this last board, which is going to go on the back, which will be the last of your mountain piece for strapping to the tree. Well, that's it, all complete. Um, everything's meshed up. Sometimes there's a little bit of filly bits in the corners around here, but you're better off just taking a little bit more time and um, getting everything covered up because if your feed is empty, the squirrels will just start and chew through them and that's the whole reason why I put mesh around them. One thing I would say is be careful if you're putting mesh on because there's some sharp edges so just watch what you're doing. The way I build these feeders gives us a few options about whether I need to have the tree and the seed feeder actually in the middle so I can shoot them head on or if I want to move them to either side and then shoot them from the side. Right, so this feed is complete now. Um, I've totaled it up and the total cost, including the mesh, for to build this feeder was about seven pound. Um, if you buy the mesh in bulk packs of 10 sheets from Screwfix, it works out at about three pound 50 per sheet. And the other odds and swords takes up about seven pound in total. So not a bad price for what you're getting. If you do have any questions or comments, just stick me in the comments below and I'll answer what I can. If you have enjoyed watching the videos, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you later.